Hi friends, it's Ashley with Selling Digital, where I help you design a life you love by turning your creativity into income. We have a new trend that is popping like crazy, and I would like to say it's not that new, but at least it's popping now because I tried this a long, long ass time ago and it did not pop. It did not pop off, but it's popping off now and we're just gonna be grateful and not salty about it at all, maybe a little bit. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make faux embroidery appliques in Affinity Designer. That's right, fake. They're not real, obviously, right? But they're PNGs that look real. They look like real embroidery appliques. And they are so cool and so beautiful. One way I love to do it is to make alpha doodles like this. And since my alpha doodle videos you guys loved, I felt, you know what? Let's make a little alpha doodle style t-shirt design, if you will, that is an embroidery applique. Now, I like to make these various types of yarn, latch hook, crochet, knitted style designs in Procreate personally, but I also use Affinity Designer when I'm doing it this way, where there's like an applique, a type of pattern first to fill the object and then the embroidery around. I like to do these in Affinity Designer and you'll see why because it's so easy. You could also do this in Procreate. It's still easy. It's just to me easier in Affinity Designer. But if you have Procreate, you can also do it there. So if you'd like a tutorial on how to do this in Procreate, let me know and I'd be happy to show you how to do that as well. I know a lot of people are using AI and that is also a beautiful option, but sometimes AI can be a bit finicky and not, let's say, not the same every single time. So you might have one design that looks really, really good and then you try to do another one and now that one looks totally different. And so then it's kind of obvious when you're using AI in your shop. Granted, we always wanna be upfront and honest if we're using AI, but we also want to generate things that are looking cohesive like the same so that if a customer does come to us and say, hey, can you make this, but in this style, you wanna be able to say, yes, I can. And just a little pro tip, these are selling like hotcakes on Etsy, design bundles, and Creative Fabrica. So if you are a digital designer and you sell on any of these platforms, hop on this trend. So the first thing we need to do is open Affinity Designer and I'm gonna do my basic 3600 by 3600 pixels, 300 DPI of course, and we'll be ready to go. All right, so we are in Affinity Designer right now and I'm going to show you how to import your brush set. Now the place that I got this brush pack was 2G was 2D Game Art Guru, and you can find them on YouTube and Gumroad, but I will link to the specific brush set there. Uh, but it's a wonderful brush set and it's a vector brush set. So we could go on Creative Fabrica and we could find a brush set that would work wonderful in Procreate, but I wasn't able to find a brush set that was vector based. And that's really what we need to be able to accomplish this in Affinity Designer. So what we're gonna do is we're going to select the three lines over here on the right hand side and we're gonna to go to import brushes. Then we are going to go to where our download is. So it says Chris Embroidery Stitches. So we're going to double click that and it has now imported 36 vector brushes. If you import and it says imported certain amount of raster brushes, that's not going to work for what we are trying to do today. Very, very important, okay? So once those are imported we can just x out of that and they're going to be over here so if we select you'll see layers and then you'll see brushes if we select the down arrow we'll be able to find those and here they are right up at the top and these are all of the different brushes they are so good i love them super excited to use them all right and then today i'm just going to type the word spooky that's what we are going to do today i grabbed the wrong one i want the artistic text tool all right, and I'm just gonna type in S-P-O-O-K-Y, and the font I'm using, it's called It's Me Hello. Uh, I probably got it on Creative Fabric. <laughs> That's where I get 90% of my fonts, so if you're looking for it. All right, and then I'm gonna make it larger so that it's just easier to work with. There we go. We can always adjust our canvas later, but I always work in a canvas size of 3600 by 3600 pixels. That ensures that we have really good 300 DPI. Okay, so now that we have this, if we were to double click, you will notice that we get the cursor, right? Because it's a font and we can adjust it. But we can't work with it in a font. We need it to turn into a shape. So we have to convert to curves. And the way that we do that is by selecting the move tool 
and we just right click and we're going to select convert to curves. There we go, that's all we have to do. Now, if we double click, you'll see that each individual shape is selected because now they're not text, now they're shapes. And that's all we need to be able to move forward. Now that we have that part done, it's time to go do the fun part, and that is picking out our texture because we want our applique to look like it's a real life applique, like a real texture for the fabric inside. So we're gonna find a texture that's a really light color, and then we're also gonna find some spooky Halloween style digital papers that we can use to put inside each letter. So we're on Creative Fabrica and I did a quick search for just fabric textures and a bunch of them came up, but this one I think is gonna be the best. It's a nice white cotton fabric texture. It doesn't have a whole lot of variants in like color. You can see a little bit of shading, but I think that's gonna look good and I really like it. So I'm gonna go ahead and download this one. And then I went ahead and I looked for some different types of Halloween style uh, digital papers. Those are my favorite. That's what you should always search for is digital papers. They just always have so many to choose from. And this is the reason why I absolutely love this platform because you're able to subscribe for a small fee every month or just once a year. And I think it's like, yeah, $47. That's crazy if you pay it for the year. Anyways, I love it because you're able to download as many things as you want for free or for free. It's like girl math, right? <laughs> it feels like it's free because you're only paying one time if you pay for the year or pay a low cost monthly. But if you do want it free, I have a link in the description box below and it get, you get 10 free downloads. And then after that, you get start getting um, your charge your monthly, but super, super well worth it if you're going to be downloading all the time. All right, so I went ahead and chose this one here, the classic pumpkins and bats, because they're so spooky, but so cute. And they're like cute spooky. And well, I love that. So this is what we're gonna go with. Downloaded that, now let's head back to Affinity Designer and start putting our design together. Okay, so here we are in Affinity Designer, and now it's time to put our texture inside of our letters. So we're going to grab the S here. So we're gonna select where it says, insert inside the selection and then we're going to select the place tool. We're gonna to grab our white cotton texture and that's just gonna go inside. Now we can make this a little bit larger. That way we can make sure that it's gonna fit over the entire thing. And also so that we can really see it. So I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. There we go. That way I can make sure that it's going to go over the whole entire word. All right, and then I'm gonna hit Control C. That way we can copy it. I'm gonna do the same thing for each letter. So now that we're done, we're gonna select letter P. I'm gonna select inside. And then I'm just gonna hit Control V because I already copied that. So that's a paste. Now, if you're not good with this kind of thing, you're just going to do that same routine over again, which means you would select, go here, and then select the picture again. I'm just not going to do that each time because this is faster. All right, so now we have a full texture on over the entire thing. So the next thing I wanna do is remove the background of each one. As you can see, if we were to zoom in here, you don't have to do this, but it's just something that bugs me. If we zoomed in here, you could see that it already looks like it has a border, and that's because the letters are black behind it. So I am going to just take out each one. So we're gonna select each one, go to color, select where it says fill, and I'm just going to erase that. Okay, we're gonna mark the fill as nothing. I don't know why, it just bugs me. If it doesn't bug you, awesome. Then I would just leave it. All right, so now we don't have anything behind there. The only thing inside the letter is the texture. Okay, so now that the texture is on there, now we can add in our fill, our actual patterns that we found. So I'm gonna go back to the S, and I'm gonna do that same thing I did before, except this time we're gonna choose a pattern. So we're gonna do insert inside. I'm gonna to go to my downloads. All right, and then we're going to pick something that's going to look really cute. Let's do this one right here, this little ghost one. All right, and now I'm gonna zoom in so you guys can see this really well. Now, as you can see, there is no texture on this one, but we want it to be there. So what we wanna do is we wanna select 
the digital paper. So the design portion, the part that has the fabric, the part that has the design that we want to show. We're gonna select that. So not this one, not this layer, and not this layer where it's selecting all of them, but this layer here where it has the pattern. And then we're gonna go up to where it says normal right next to opacity, click the down arrow, and then go to multiply. And when we do that, it makes both of those shown. So we're gonna do that with each one. So I'm gonna zoom out again. You see how that just gives us a little bit of a texture? Looks really good. All right, so we're gonna go to number, or to number, we're gonna go to letter P and we're gonna do that same thing. Pick another digital paper that we think is gonna go well. Let's choose these ghosts, okay? And then we will, again, just go over, multiply. We'll do that same thing for each and every letter. Okay, so now we can zoom out so we can see the whole thing all together. Super cute, I absolutely love it. Okay, so now it's time to be doing our border. So we're gonna select the letter. So we'll start with this one here. We're gonna go over to stroke. We're gonna make it a little bit bigger. Not really sure what color we're gonna do, probably black, but maybe pink. Let's switch it to black for now. All right, and then let's go ahead, go back to stroke. We're gonna select brushes, and now we're going to find a brush that's going to work really well here. So these ones are too far apart here. Too tight. All right, and now let's start lowering it down. Starting to not really love the black because it's getting like that gray color. So what if we did like a pink or an orange? Ooh, I'm kind of liking that shade there. All right, so we're just going to mess around and see which one of these we like the best. We'll just have to arrange the stroke down. I want to make sure it's got enough like puff to it, like 3D-ishness. Oh, I think I like that. Yep, I like that. Okay, so that's perfect. So all we have to do is remember, so we're at eight point and then the color. And then we're going to do this on each one. So let's grab this one here and we're going to do Eight, eight point. All right, and then the stitch we used was 128. And we need to switch it back down, eight point. And then color. All right, is that looking? That doesn't look the same, does it? Stitch brush one color. Why is it doing that? Okay, stroke, eight. I feel like it's looking different, isn't it? All right, next one, we're gonna do the same thing. And then eight. The only one that looks off is the S. I'm just going to change it change it back and then I think it's just because it's the biggest letter maybe I don't know all right so there is our design it turned out super super cute let's see what it's gonna look like on a mock-up let's zoom out a bit all right now what we can do is normally we would say this as a PNG so just right now what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to um, put my picture here and then grab this I'm gonna control G to put it all together. There we go. And then we're gonna move this behind. Move to the back. Okay, so I was wondering why the S was looking so weird before. I figured it out. Once we put it on here, obviously it doesn't look right. So somehow I was still, it was messed up. 
so we need to click normal. So the main letter here was set to multiply and we didn't want that. We only want this one set to multiply. So that's why it was looking different. I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy. It was looking different. Okay, let's go ahead and arrange this, how it would look on the sweater. And that design turned out super, super cute. It looks really realistic. It's very on trend and we didn't need to use AI. We just used Affinity Designer and that makes it all the more fun, I think. Well, my friends, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I had a blast doing that tutorial. It's been a while since I jumped in and just showed you guys a fun design tutorial and I love getting into Affinity Designer. I know that AI is all the rage right now and I know how exciting it is and I love to use it too, but sometimes it just feels nice to feel a little bit more creative and you just don't get that fulfillment from AI. It's like AI takes all of that creativity away. It makes it easy and it's fun in its own right, but it's just not the same when you're a creative person like myself. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And as always, go out there, go design a life you love, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.